if you reach this chapter, you have probably reached the pinnacle of circuits for A levels, which means if you understand this, this chapter well, you will be able to devise your own little electronic board. But first, what are we learning? Uh, sensing devices. That's what we're going to learn in this chapter. But you need to know the big picture. So here goes the big picture right there. So there's three parts when you're designing some kind of system. Sensing, processing, output. What do all three stand for? The first one, sensing, let's call this number one. It's the first stage. If you want to have a system, you need to convert the physical measurement to a electrical signal. So what is a sensing device? You must be able to explain that a sensing device is an object, an item or whatever tool that is used to detect or monitor some physical property. Physical property. Where do I write the next line? Property. So once it detects and monitor me and uh, measure, what does it do with that signal? It sends it along the line. So from a sensor, you convert it, convert that particular physical property, convert to some electrical property like current, like voltage, or things like that. So property. Oftentimes, uh, we can only vary current or voltage through resistance. So this electrical property that we will use to control electrical flow is resistance. Okay, so in a circuit, what you can control is the resistance and from there, you can change and control the current and voltage of a circuit. Okay, so that's what a sensing device is. We're going to learn in this video four types of sensing devices. It's the main four ones you need to know for CIE. The LDR, our good old friend, will make a return. The mister as well. Can you guess what they measure? What property they measure? Ah, And there's two new ones we have not seen before called the strain gauge. And... I'm just going to call the next one the piezo crystal. Piezo transducer. Piezo. Not enough space. So don't worry, these are what we'll look at in the next four sections of this video. Okay, so once you send something, Eddie, then what do you do with it? Send it to a processing unit. Because oftentimes, all these sensing devices, are their signal is very, very small. So you need something to amplify. So you send an input into a processing unit. And this processing unit is stage two. We're going to learn particularly about the operational amplifier, also known as the OP-M, to amplify this signal, M, -ma, amplify. So what, if I ask you, what is a processing unit? Well, the main job is to process the signal, but what does it want to do with the signal? Well, in past years, sometimes they may ask you, what is a processing unit? You must be able to say that a processing unit operates, what does it do? Uh? What's the function? Uh? It operates on the signal from the sensing device that come in, Signal from sensing device. And then what does it do with it? Make it larger, make it usually make it larger, filter a bit, um, clean it up a bit, and then send it on to the output device. So it gives a voltage output. This is the main idea of the whole system. Any kind of system that you are designing or you know doing for a project. So you have a V in, then you will send an output V out, and it goes to output device. An Apple device can do a lot of things. Lah. It can be like an LED. Turn on the light. Hey, make those blinky, blinky lights over there. Could be an LED. It could be a relay switch. Oh, if you detect this, turn on the switch. Any kind of thing. Well, basically, it's just action. Okay, so number three is talking about action. So you got a signal. What do you do? And if you're wondering, like, what is a processing unit? We'll learn more about that. But here's an example. A general idea of what a, a sample of a processing unit could look like, which is like this. So you see on this thing, there's an input and there's an output. So what you usually can do is you take a wire or some kind of thing that is having an input. Can you see on there? Wire. Then I plug it in. No? There we go. Then if I want to send an output out somewhere, all I need to do is take another wire, connect, inside here, push in, and ta-da, I have an input processing unit, output go out. So what I can do is, if a signal come in here, I can change the knob, do whatever I want with the signal, make it louder, smaller, funny shape, everything. When I'm done adjusting everything, all these knobs, I will send it out to the output, and off it goes. 
Okay, so this is what processing unit do and this is what, uh, you know, little systems do. Okay, let's move to the first one, the LDR. Can you guess what the LDR measures? What physical property? Well, it's kind of obvious, but light dependent resistor. It's a resistor that changes its resistance depending on light. The symbol for this LDR is a resistor, but with two extra arrows to represent the light that can affect the resistance of this resistor R. So this resistor, this LDR looks a bit specialized, the one down here. Uh, you may have played with this before in an experiment in lab in school, if you remember how it looks like. But this this re this LDR has two metal grids that intersect each other. So this is the first thing, intersect each other. And the space between the grids is filled with some kind of semiconducting material. So we could say a semiconductor material. And this semiconductor keeps popping up. It's a special material. So now when there's light coming in to shine on this LDR, the number of electrons will increase. And so, the higher the light intensity, the higher the light intensity, the lower the resistance, because it's got more charge flowing around inside there to carry current and all the inside that. So it's easier to move charges because resistance lower. Okay. So the main thing you need to know is higher light intensity, lower the resistance. Why? Because it's got semiconductor inside. Okay. So when bright, quite bright, resistance decrease okay and there is a graph that goes with this i'm going to redraw this again because you may not remember this from last time if we draw a graph of resistance in ohms against light intensity uh for example in units of lux that's one way to measure it light intensity in lux you will get this kind of shape where it's like that so, I mean, it will intersect eventually lah. When there's completely dark, you will still have a resistance. It won't be infinity. So, you will intersect. But this is roughly how it looks like. Okay, when when your light intensity is very, very high, very bright, like down here, your resistance is quite low. Almost zero. If it's very, very dark. See, I put purple color to me. Very dark. This is dark. Wow, then resistance very high. Okay, so this is light dark you may see if you google online different kinds of graphs such as the one where it's do log r against log of lux light intensity uh, then that one you may see a straight line but don't worry about that too much just so you know the main thing you need to know is the behavior of when it's bright resistance is low okay that's the first sensing device you may see this in your porch in your house when the light when it becomes night time suddenly the lights turn on by themselves eh how do the lights know that it's dark ldr got a sensor there you look carefully sure got sensor one like night light like that when it when you it becomes dark suddenly everything will on ldr that's the first sensor the second one is a, also an old friend called the thermistor another kind of resistor what does it measure leh? you see the hint here temperature so it's measuring the physical quantity of temperature so it's also made from semiconductor material but the thing you need to know is the higher the temperature what happened to the resistance ah? the higher the temperature the lower the resistance okay this one semiconductor material behaves a little bit differently you know check out the OAS video uh, talking about this in more detail but Basically, it's semiconductor inside there. When it's very hot, there are a lot of free electrons running out and about, and all these free electrons increase the conductivity and so lower resistance can conduct electricity much better. So uh, the thing is also have a graph here of resistance against temperature, maybe in units of ohm and Celsius. Ah, also this is known as the NTC thermistor. Ah. Is it miss? Isn't this like a thermometer? Exactly. We didn't exactly learn this in the thermometer unit uh, chapter, but just so you know, okay? So when it is hot, ooh, resistance is really low. So this graph also looks something like this. So when it's really, really hot, I'm going to put a nice red color there. Hot, 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 hot. Resistance is low. When it's really cold, icy cold, I'm going to use what? Blue, ah. okay lah, blue. Yeah, I guess it's light blue. So when it's very cool and cold, temperature colder 
then the resistance is much higher. This is also known as cold resistance. When cold, got resistance very high low. Just now the LDR is what? Ah, uh? uh, dark resistance. Uh, so I put a hashtag here. Dark resistance. It sounds like some kind of team name for some... Or some movie name. Welcome to the dark resistance. Welcome to the coal resistance. Okay, sure. Uh, so anyway, just know the thermistor. What's the symbol for thermistor? In circuits, you will see the symbol look something like this. Resistor also. But got special. Got this symbol here. That is your thermistor. Now, note that this is different from your... Uh, your, your remember in thermometers, uh, there's one thermometer you learn where the it's a wire resistance wire platinum thermometer this is the this is not the same uh. that one is a different this is a negative temperature coefficient so the hotter it is the lower the resistance because it's made out of special semiconductor material your old thermometer is made out of metal wire it's a conductor so it's not the same okay go review your notes a bit if you're not sure what i'm talking about thermometers there are types of thermometers one of them is a metal wire which is a conductor so I write here, uh, not same as platinum wire conductor thermometer. Thermometer. It's a reminder for you. Different things. This is a component of itself. Okay, next. What other things? Oh, where have we seen this? Uh? Ah, this one, every of your house sure got one. You know, when you when your room uh, gets very hot, how does the aircon know to start blowing out cold air? How does the aircon know the temperature? Uh? Aircon got circuit. Circuit got thermistor. Thermistor say, eh, a bit warm. Now. Okay, okay. Start, start blowing cold air into the room to make it cool down a bit. That's your temperature setting. Uh, okay. One of the ways is this thermistor to set it, especially for older aircons. Uh, in the fridge also, you open the fridge door. Hey. After a while, how did the fridge know to start blowing cold air? Because of the fridge sense. Oh, temperature is dropping. Resistance very high. Like, okay, okay. Start the circuit. Okay. Faster start the fan, blow the fan, oh, everything. So anything that is a physical property of temperature change can be measured by this nice chip called the thermistor. Okay, the next one is a kind of a new one called the metal wire strain gauge. What is this? So the strain gauge is... Looks something like this nice small little chip. Looks like a plaster almost. Like, you know, plaster you stick on your hand. Plaster. Strain gauge. And what are all these black lines? Okay, let's label them. So, the strain gauge is made out of very small, fine metal lines. You see, the, they call it the resistive foil. But the actual word you use in CIA is, is the strain gauge consists of a length of very fine, very, very fine, thin metal wire. Metal wire. Okay, and that is this metal wire. Fold into a very cute matrix. A grid. And this whole metal wire is sealed into this yellow color thing. What is this yellow color thing? Well, we usually say it's a small rectangle thin plastic. Sealed up. Because you don't want water to touch the wire. Or any kind of things. Because you want electricity to be going through that. So a, a small rectangle of thin plastic. Sealed. And of course, laid out in a grid. Laid out. Let's also write that there in a grid. You see the pattern on the left side there? Ah, that's a pattern. Oh. So this is your metal wire. Okay, so what does this thing do? Can you guess what it measures? LDR measure light, thermistor measure therm tem tem temperature. What does a strain gauge measure? Strain. Wow, such interesting, such creative naming convention. Strain gauge measure strain. What is strain? Ah? Do you remember? Ah? From AS, deformation of solid. What is stress, strain and young modulus? Once upon a time, we learned that strain. Did we use this symbol for strain? Maybe we did. Strain is the extension, stretching or compressing the change in length of a particular object. Last time we learned, nah, got metal, we pull this way, it's tension, or we can squash it, also got change in length. 
Okay, so that would be a, a metal wire that's straining over the original length. So that's what we measured last time more strain or uh, stretching or compressing or I guess twisting in some sense, but that's a different type of deformation. We well, won't go there. So it measures strain. Oh, I forgot. Ah, strain gauge. Strain gauge is attached to a structure. So if you want uh, to, let's say, sure, you want to measure a building, uh, you want to make sure the pillar doesn't strain and then suddenly it breaks, right? So you attach it to the structure to be monitored or to check. Monitored. So if you have a big, big, I don't know, tall pillar or pipe or whatever it is, then you put this small strain gauge here like that. Then got wire, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding, connect to circuit. Okay. If this big pipe start to bend or tilt or get longer or shorter, this strain gauge will know. Eh, why, why suddenly the resistance changed already? Something has changed. Ah, so that's what's a what it's trying to detect. Oh? So when the plastic is stretched, the fine wire will also be stretched. You see here, the strain direction can be either long, getting longer, getting shorter, but the wire will be stretched as the main thing. When the wire is strained, okay, when the whole material strain, the wire also strained. When the wire is strained, it causes the length to increase. Its length to increase. Eh, it's what we call a delta L. La. I know last time we say extension is X, but now we just change our minds. We say, okay, uh, delta L, L is change in length. So delta L and the N is behind me. And what happened there? Eh? What happened to the cross section area? Well, the wire is very thin, right? Ideal strain gauge, the wire is very thin. So even if the length increase, the cross section area should be a negligible decrease. So an and a negligible, a very small decrease in cross section area. This is kind of like AS also. If you have a uh, metal wire like this, then you stretch it. Okay la. If it's very thick wire or when you stretch it or the area might become thinner low like this. But if your wire is really very fine, very thin, you stretch a bit, your cross-section area is not going to change much. Okay, so this is a throwback, a good throwback to the formation of solid chapter. Okay, so how do you measure, just now we convert what ah? Light to resistance. Temperature to resistance. Now this one, length to resistance, can may miss how to convert length, change in length, a delta L. Do you remember your AS? There's something that relates length to resistance? The answer is dun, 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 rho L over A, resistivity of a particular wire with a certain cross section area. There. Area. Length. Aha! Aha! So you can also say oh, if there's a change in R, that can be due to a change in L. If we assume a change in uh, area is negligible. So from this equation, everything else is constant, right? Rho is the material, the density, is it metal, is it copper, is it iron, what is it? Area, we assume constant. So then, all that's left is a change in resistance corresponds to a change in L and it's proportional. Now, this one is the one that you will use in calculations in past year. All you need to do is ratio. Okay, so this, this ratio tells you that R over L is a constant. Because R, change in R is proportional to change in L. Okay, so check out the past year after this video if you want to know more about this. Alright, so where is this used? Uh? Brainstorm a bit. Where would you need to see a change in length? Well, oh, here's a nice picture. Ah, so you stick it there, got terminal law, positive, negative. Uh, you can connect it to a circuit. So the moment you tend you stretch it or you make it shorter, make it longer, ah, then this length will change. The length of the whole wire will change, lah. And from there you can measure detect changes. So people use it on aeroplane, lor. Maybe aeroplane they stick some at the wing here, stick some at this side, stick some there, stick some there. So the moment the wing bend too much, they're like, oh, oh, tell the pilot, tell the pilot, hey, your aeroplane wing is bending. After the aeroplane break, like, then how? Or maybe it could be on bridges. Maybe you're a civil engineer trying to design a bridge. But you, you need people to monitor the bridge, right? Maybe you got resonance on uh, the bridge bend here, bend there. 
Then you put a few here, you put a few here. Suddenly you see the strain gauge got reading now. Oh no! Hey, faster go and check the bridge okay or not. Maybe got cracked after all the car dropped down. GG. A lot of mechanical structures, same thing for trains. The rails will expand and contract and you really don't want that to happen to keep people safe. So mainly use in monitoring. Lah. You want to measure earthquake, lah, also can. Lah. You want to put it on pipes to measure the expansion of pipes, also can. You see this one are quite interesting. Got four strain gauge. Eh. Can you see the four? One, two, three, four. Why they put four like that? Ah? Oh, this one measure change in strain this direction. These two measure the change in strain in that direction. So you put all four together, you have a bigger picture of how the shape of this metal is changing. The metal, is it twisting? Is it getting longer? Is it getting shorter? What kind of deformation? So if you go more into civil engineering, geotechnical fields, earthquake, this will be your best friend. Lah. Okay, you want please make, uh, make sure we are safe. The, our building is safe. Our trains, our bridges, everything. Our pipes, nothing exploding. We want to keep safe. That's a strain gauge. I'm going to pause here at this point And before I go on to the last uh, device, all these things, LDR, NTC, and strain gauge, they are usually connected to what we call a potential divider circuit. So I'm going to make a note. Side note, 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 note. So LDR, the metal strain gauge is connected to a potential divider circuit. Do you remember what that is from AS? Potential divider circuit generally looks like this. If you have a circuit of certain power supply, maybe this is 5 volts, for example, then you connect two resistors. These two resistors will share the potential drop, right? I take a bit, you take a bit. How do we know? It depends on their ratio. So maybe one of these could be a, a thermistor. And if you measure the V out of this, you take a voltmeter, you measure the V out. Okay, this is the V out. Ah, that's how you know there's a changes or not. Lo. Is there a change in voltage? Because voltage we can measure. So you connect a voltmeter like this next to me. And the moment you have some kind of change in temperature, this thermistor, the thermistor, thermistor resistance value will change depending on the ratio. So hey, let, I'll just write out a reminder for you. But we'll have a, a separate bonus video later to remind you how to calculate this. So there are a few ways to do this ratio, ratio thing. This one example here, you could do the R2 over the total resistance, which is R1 plus R2. And that ratio will be the same as this V out over V in. What is V in? V in is this whole thing, no? Potential difference from input 0 to 5. 5 volts, no? So just remember, ratio is your best friend. Whenever you see potential divider, you need to remember a bit how you used to do potential divider in AS. The last one is a piezoelectric transducer. Wow, so many words. Okay. Here's, here's the thing for you to think about. You know your phone, right? You take your phone. How does the phone hear your voice ah, when you talk on the phone? Hello? Ah, later, I'll ah, bring the pizza hut over here, okay? I want to eat some pizza. Eh, no, no, no. i order some grab food. How does the phone know? Can you find the mic on your phone? Look around. You see a dot at the bottom usually. That's a microphone. Ah, microphone so small. Ah, one dot. Ah. Yeah. Or you have your headphones when you... Uh, sorry, headphones. Uh, earphones. When you're listening to music, and then you suddenly you talk on your phone with your friend. You see, for example, this headphone, there's a strip here. What is this? Ah? Why the microphone like this one? No hole also. Ah? How do these things pick up your voice? Hmm. Piezoelectric transducer. The last one I show you. Very funny one. You remember the old telephone that we used to use? I don't know if you remember. They look like this one. You pick up the phone. Hello? Then you, <laughs> then you put your ears. Ah, yes, yes. Hello? Ah. There's something inside here. Oh. It might be a piezoelectric transducer. You see this small little dot here? Piezoelectric transducer. But how does it work? That's what we want to figure out in this section. Okay, let's continue. So, a sound wave, we're looking at sound now, consists of refraction and compression. Usually, last time we draw like that. Lah. Ding, ding, dong, ding. Here got a speaker or whatever. Ah. Then, all these lines are compression. No? Compression, compression, compression. All the spaces, rarefaction. 
So high pressure is compression. <laughs> high pressure. Refraction is low pressure. So if you have a sound wave on a piezoelectric crystal, ooh, I have a piezoelectric crystal somewhere here to show you. Ah, this one. So let's say you have a sound wave that is coming into this crystal. Like that, boing, 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 boing. This one is going to have some kind of changes that I can measure or convert to electric signal. So when a sound wave incident on piezoelectric, a voltage is produced across that crystal. And it changed in a way that is like the variation in pressure of sound wave. Wow, what does that mean? Ah? Ayo. So uh, you see, uh, this piezo, this one dot, right? Your sound wave got a pressure changing, compression, refraction. Means your voltage inside this crystal, the voltage here, will also have some kind of change. That's just what it means though, in time. And from there, you can tell what's a, the sound already, right? You convert sound into an electric signal because voltage. That's what it means. Uh, where were we? Ah, talking about the variation. Okay, so why does that happen in the first place? Ah? This is the interesting part. Piezoelectric crystal has some kind of crystal ionic structure where if the pressure is applied, the crystal will... What happened to the crystal? Change shape. So I'm going to write there, change shape. And the center of the positive and charges, a uh, positive negative charge in the crystal will no longer coincide with each other. Lah inside so what is a crystal by the way crystal are these nice things you take the crystal you change the static structure of it then got electricity signal come out already so basically uh, I can take my phone uh, or this crystal thing and I yell at it ha hello then suddenly got electricity voltage appear inside there quite magic right you squash and change then got kind of some kind of voltage so you don't need to know this part i'm just showing you in case you're curious google is your best friend go and google some more if you're interested so you put the crystal inside there you put uh plates on the other side to pick up the output voltage so if you squash this this crystal you change the shape a bit voltage hello? why ah? because of this kind of thing no i this is a chris quartz crystal which has a structure that looks like this we don't need to know this but if you're curious here's how it looks like if you pull it apart, tension, then the shape change. Oh. Got shape change, then got some kind of charge. Liao. Nah, positive, negative. Then the other one, if you compress, you squash the crystal together, got change in shape, right? Oh, then got another, sh then got negative, positive. Oh. You can connect to circuit, got voltage to measure. So if you're interested in this more, or if you ever work on uh, material science kind of thing, yeah, this will be your best friend. Physical chemistry, material science. So what are the crystals? Some people use um, all these elements, barium, titanate, lead, zirconate, titanate, Rochelle salt, and quartz. So yeah, go and Google more if you're interested. Lots of chemistry there, but we just need to know roughly how it works. That's the explanation here. Okay, so the magnitude of the voltage depends on the magnitude of pressure. So bigger pressure, bigger voltage. Bigger sound, bigger voltage. So I think my this one might be a piezo. I'm not sure. You know, open it up and see. So the polarity of voltage depends on whether the crystal is compressed or stretched. So this is talking about the polarity, which is what we can see um, here. So you see, tension, right? Tension is pulling apart. All the arrow are the force pulling it apart. So up there positive, down there negative. But if you squash it together, compression, up there is negative, down there is positive. So polarity just depends on whether you are getting squashed or pulled apart. So how to detect voltage? To detect voltage, the opposite uh, faces of the crystal, we coat it with metal film. So opposite faces of the crystal is coated with metal film. And we make a circular connection in the circuit. Then you have a very small voltage detected. Then we need to amplify it. Ah, this one is the job of the processing unit. Okay, so yeah, that's how the piezo electric transducer works. Pretty cool. Converts mechanical energy thing into electrical energy. Pressure, movement, sound, vibration into a voltage you can measure with a voltmeter or CRO. So that is how you can do pretty cool stuff with the piezo electric transducer.
So other than telephone, you like hello, piezo, or other than headphones, which you used to call your friend, ah, piezo oftentimes also can be seen in the music industry. So if you have a pickup that is a piezo, these things can be used in string instruments, got drums, got guitars, got all the string instruments, got... What's the other one? Uh? Brasses wind. Sometimes they use these piezo things too. And you just see a tiny little thing just stuck on the surface there. Sometimes piano use it too for some reason. And when you take this electric crystal piezo transducer and you connect it to a processing unit like the amplifier. I wonder what makes an amplifier an amplifier. Okay. There is a hole for input somewhere here. So I plug it in. In. Okay. Then I can turn on the thing and it will amplify whatever vibration or sound wave this little piezo transducer picks up. So let's turn it on. And hopefully don't feedback because it'll be very loud if it does. So we hear some kind of vibration. Now I'm going to tap this little thing. Hmm, got sound now. I can do my clapping dance. And that's also my example. I'm not going to stop the whole thing because it will get very loud. So that is all for this uh, part about sensing devices. Just know you have a sensing device. Send to a processing unit. Turn all the knobs. Increase the gain. Turn here, turn there. Wow, louder, softer. Amplify. The op M will be coming up next after this unit. And of course, send it to an output device. Like a light or some kind of thing. Okay, so that's all for this video. See you in the examples video on sensing devices.